The Banshee, a female spirit in Irish mythology, ugly, disheveled with long hair, will usually emit a horrible scream, usually to mourn the death of close family. Do you believe this? We have those who had allegedly seen this mythical entity grab a blanket, turn off your lights, and... <coughs> Bloody Banshee I have always called this thing a bloody banshee in my own head. It was over 30 years ago, when I was between the ages of 3 and 5. There was a room in our house that my mother tells me no one else would stay in but me. I am guessing at the time no one really cared about the opinion of a 4 year old baby boy. I've always been haunted at night. I get shivers in the dark seem to see things that have happened before, and used to do quite a bit of ghost hunting when I was a teenager. This just happens to be one thing I can't explain or track down any information about. We had a typical San Fernando Valley backyard, but not at night when my bloody banshee was about. Her arrival was always announced by this horrible sound. Almost like a screaming steam engine hissing and burning, I would know she was coming if I looked out my window, the normal landscape would be changed. There would be a desert, and the swirling and coloring of a sunset as far as I could see. Sometimes you could hear her before you saw her, and sometimes you saw her on the horizon before you heard her, just wailing and screaming as she made her way back to my window. She was all fire red, cape, body, and to an even deeper extent, her eyes. She would yell and scream at me all night long, let me in, what's your name? Even worse were the times when she would try to reason with me nicely. At, at my age, I could see the rage in the background and I knew that if I didn't get her what she wanted, her anger would be worse than before. Sometimes she would hit the house so hard, the whole thing would shake. Often I would not get any sleep at all because she would stay until right before sunrise. Irish Guy Banshee Experience When I was about seven years old, we lived in a place called Dundrum, County Down in Ireland. I never experienced anything ghostly though. At seven, I was afraid of just about everything though. One night, I was lying in my bed trying to fall asleep. I was lying on my back with my arms folded across my chest and the duvet up to my chin. The bed faced a small window in what we call the box room. It was around eight feet by six feet. As I was trying to sleep, I felt a gust. I opened my eyes in time to see the curtains falling back into place. I got up from my bed to close the window. It opened out at the top while the bottom was a fixed sheet of glass. I stood back thinking how strange it was as the window was closed. I lay in bed occasionally peeking, peeking at the curtains. When nothing had happened for a while, I felt comfortable and I closed my eyes. To my horror, I felt a huge gush. The curtains were nearly touching the ceiling. I lay there frozen and I swear, I wish this was all lies. The most ugliest and tatey dressed in white bitch swept straight through the glass and hovered a couple feet above my bed, staring at me. I tried to get up to run to my parents' room, but the ugly old bitch was tightening the duvet around my neck. I struggled with all of my might, with my eyes closed, when somehow I managed to break free. I bolted down the hall and freaked out, waking my parents up. My father was a very strict man. I shit you not, he told me to grow up and march me back to my room. I sat upright in my bed the rest of the night, with a duvet over my head sitting in a puddle on my own piss. If I could just remain silent, maybe the old woman would not hear me. I am 38 now, and all my children's lives had never and will never sleep with my bed facing a window. My wife knows why, as 
There is nothing I have not confided in her. Over the years, I have heard of a condition known as Old Hag Syndrome. Even if that is what it was, it was no less terrifying to a seven-year-old kid. Back to the Banshee side, our surname begins with a O-H. A few days after this horrific experience, my parents had a bad car crash. An oncoming speeding car hit black ice on a country road. My parents survived the collision, but my father was in the hospital for three weeks. I wonder if this was a bad omen, and the Banshee had sent a warning? I feel myself returning to that petrified seven-year-old kid and consoling him in my mind. Surely, she will not return. Banshee and Other Encounters So all my life, I've been a little sensitive, feeling vibes in certain rooms, getting that gut feeling about something, even having deja vu occurring quite often, just a lot of different experiences. The one thing I can remember clearly as a child is hearing my name as clear as day usually followed by asking my mom why she was calling me, since the voice sounded female, only to have her tell me she didn't call my name. But the other day, my dad asked me a weird question. He asked me if I still had the dreams like I used to. I asked him what he meant. Apparently, when I was younger, I constantly had dreams about my past relatives most of whom I've never even met. I was able to even send along messages from my grandparents to my parents, for instance, and give pieces of information about them that no one ever told me about. My father then also told me for a short while he would hear me in my room talking to someone, and when, when he walked in and asked who I was talking to, I would say grandma, like it was completely normal. I don't know why I don't remember a lot of this, I remember bits and pieces, but I think it's because my mother is particular, it doesn't enjoy that type of talk, and actually had me refrain from it. My father, however, seemed to be more supportive, him believing in such. He was interested if I had those dreams to see if I had any messages. What this all boils down to is, I am wondering if it's possible for my family to have some some type of spiritual abilities. It goes down as far as my great-grandmother on my mother's side. My mom finally told me about her horrifying account of a banshee and other things that have happened to her throughout her life, which is probably why she wasn't happy when her daughter started to experience the same thing. See, every woman in my family has experienced the cry of the banshee, except me. Apparently, there is an awful howling that just radiates through the entire house and even outside that it is so loud and terrifying it makes you want to flee. It's supposed to be the Banshee howling over someone soon to be demise from what she told me. My great grandmother, grandmother, and mother have all experienced it at some point in their life. When my mother experienced hers, she was home alone at the time and she said it was almost like a horrible wolf howling, and it was so loud, and in any room of the house, it seemed to follow you. She told me how she went throughout the house, the basement, even outside, to try and find where it was coming from. Finally, after an hour or so, right before my grandmother came home, it stopped. My mom waited outside for her, terrified, and explained to my grandma what happened. My grandmother was very calm about the whole situation, and explain to her how our family is cursed with the cry of the banshee. A few days later, my great-grandmother died. Another thing that happened to her was kind of an omen. A few days before my grandfather died, my grandmother and mother were in the kitchen, and my mom happened to look out the window and saw their entire yard filled with crows. 
From what she told me, there wasn't an inch that wasn't covered by crows, and this was in late December, mind you. A day or so later, right before Christmas, my grandfather died of a sudden heart attack. I haven't yet heard this cry or seen any omens such as this, but needless to say, a lot of other things have happened in my life. Not too long ago, I was in my boyfriend's house. Some paranormal stuff has gone down there too. I have a previous story about that, and I walked out into the hallway and saw a bird just sitting on the crown molding of the top floor hallway. I of course went to go investigate, calling my boyfriend to come help get it out of the house, and we both saw it fly into a room we use for storage. It went behind an old dresser we don't use, and I went to try and get it out, so we can get it back outside and it seriously vanished. There was no trace whatsoever of this bird. I even turned and asked my boyfriend to see if it possibly flew out the room or anything, and he was as stunned as I was. Then, after we proceeded to go through the entire house, none of the doors or windows in the house were open. It was winter, so windows being open would have been ridiculous. Then we went downstairs and asked if anyone had seen a bird or anything because it was a little odd and it was only on the second floor. No one had seen anything. The thing is, when I saw it, it was like I was compelled to look where it was. I mean, how often do I exit the bedroom and look up across the hallway at the crown molding? The only thing I can match this to is when I was going through a rather difficult time in my life and I took it as either it was a sign for things to get better or things to get worse, given my family's previous history with birds. I haven't had a dream of someone contacting me since my grandmother passed. It was the most comforting thing I remember at that time. She came to me the day she died and told me not to cry for her, that she was in a better place, and she doesn't want me being upset. When I finally told my mom about this a few years later, she told me that while she was still grieving and was alone in the house, she heard my grandmother's voice call her name as clear as a bell. My mom took it as a sign of her trying to comfort her. I've had a lot of little things, such as feelings and vibes, etc., of walking into a house or a room, but not much else. I'm just trying to figure out if it's possible for the woman on my mother's side of the family to be sensitive to, to something else, or possibly has something following us. Her side is solely of Irish and Ukraine descent. If anyone has any insight as to what is going on, if someone even has a similar experience, please share with me. I've been dying to know for years if it's possible we're, we're all a little sensitive or something.